All right, this is the radiant floor tubing for an additional unit. That empty space right there is where a shower will be. We won't have any radiant floor tubing under that because that's going to be built up with mortar. Um, this is the entryway here. Looking back, you can see um, both, two, both ends of one single piece of tube, about 400 feet long, end right here. So I'll put the hot water heater in that corner on the other side of the wall. Um, the, we have styrofoam, which is actually quite strong. You can walk on it pretty well, and it doesn't compress. Uh, styrofoam is to uh, insulate against having the heat go into the ground rather than, which is of course infinity in terms of absorption, rather than into the room. It's only a half inch thick, but it'll do quite well because heat doesn't generally go down, it, it tends to rise. So then um, we will pack in concrete over this. The tubes are being held down right now by aluminum um, flashing that I've bent and you know used in various ways to hold stuff down. And so it's not a big deal, but it's there. One reason that you'll see a lot of extra tubing over on this side is first we have the stairwells right there and I want to put a lot of heat around that but also because it was a trick getting in and around the the bathroom the bathroom has a single loop in there and believe it or not that's all you need so I get to the second floor without much trouble um, circulating especially with the pump pushing it around circulating um, as it comes back and then it, it returns and comes down and this is the end. So the hot water heater goes right where that uh, roof uh, jack is. Okay, now comes the hard part. This is the mud. Incidentally, I found a couple of problems that from the time to time on a tight bend. So the best thing is try to keep things loose. Don't try to get tight bends and then try to hold the tube the long run so that they don't pressure. Okay, so now um, we're putting in concrete. Make sure it's a nice, not a soupy mix at all because this, is, this isn't kind of, a, this isn't that full two inches. It's just thinner than that, but to overcome. Okay, so there you got the lath <coughs> metal stretched over and it'll harden up and you can see it's the lath is just over the top of it. Then I put thin, thin set um, and uh, the tile right there. And that metal will also help to conduct the heat across the floor more evenly. Now over here, you, it'll probably be a little bit confusing for you to understand what I'm trying to do. But basically where you see that uh, white line there and then you've got the, the vent for the shower. Um, drain the shower drain being right here and then there's the vent and then this will be a wall here I'll just build up with uh, treated uh, two by four on top of that and then I'm going to rise it up to a point where I get to um, in this case instead of making a full wall I'm going to make it all the way up um, a little bit of the I bent the the lath kind of over the edge so when I put in the okay so we have a, a shower stall right here a small one um, you can see the my foot and stuff like that so it's going to be like that with an open door and then we're going to put glass block across there and around into the goes along here and <laughs> slightly um all right let's take a pause here to show you where we are everything now has been sealed off and with this uh the tile would be set in in the shower pan right now the pattern of tile work that i'm setting in still got a ways to go installed the glass block um, windows that will be in the shower. All right, meanwhile, on the other part of the house, we have the, which is actually an easier job 
Doesn't look too pretty, but those tubes are being covered over by aluminum flashing to help conduct the heat and distribute it as best I can um, across the floor. It also holds the tube in place, so it can't go anywhere. Okay, the tubes are spaced in such a way that when I um, deal with flooring up above, I don't put a screw inadvertently through the tube. So they stay far enough away. There's one a little bit kind of close there, but they stay far enough away from the joist so that I can um, uh, avoid putting a screw through or a nail through when I'm putting on the um, hardwood flooring, which is what I'll have up above here. So I have tile downstairs, hardwood flooring up After above. I finished putting the tubes up there and I put um, aluminum flashing to help conduct the heat. Then I put this uh, plasticized double bubble radiant foil stuff a little bit below it. So I have about a one inch gap between the tubing system and this stuff. And then there's also space below that where I put the insulation so that the heat will not come down. <laughs> It'll go up. And uh, there's a space even between the insulation and the radiant foil. So the foil um, reflects in both directions as well, keeping cold out heat in or um, in the summertime like we're having now, keep the uh, heat out. Okay. This has been months after we've done some work here. But there's the hot water heater, the pump, and the little switch, activation switch. I have to have a cold supply going in, and then there's where it go, enters the radiant floor down, down there. And then it um, has a recirculation um, that comes back. So it comes back over here. There's the domestic hot water from recirculation and solar. There's a dead end, and then the rental radiant floor return comes through the wall from the roof down there. It comes back up and over to the hot water storage tank. So the solar uh, and the natural gas fired unit pushes hot water into this tank for storage and um, during the day, and hopefully it pretty much takes care of the whole thing.